Here we are in North Perth to meet the sausage king, Pasquale Princi, who lives in this butcher shop. Hi, Pasquale. How are you? How Thanks. are you? Very good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Thanks for making time to meet with me. Oh, my, any time I can make it. So tell me, how long have you been living in this butcher shop? Well, I've been living in this butcher shop since I was 14. I'm wow. 52, so it's 30, 38, 38 years. 38 years. And, uh, but my uncle started it all. I think he, this butcher shop has been close to probably 48 years now that he's been here. Wow. So your uncle started My uncle started uncle the beginning. butcher shop. There's a uh, story behind the princey. Tell me, where, where did you learn how to butcher? Yeah. Well, we go from a family, Calabrian background of our family, all butchers, where my grandfather, great grandfather, my dad, my uncle. All butchers? All butchers. So and the reason to blood. come to Australia was in the blood. And when I came to Australia, place. I was only 13 years old, and that's all I wanted to do, mate, as a butcher. So where is the future? The future is still here, I hope. God knows we got all our health. A few years ago, we got invested into a farm where we do our own lot feed. We got our own a little bit of share on our abattoirs, which we do, which is our gingered meat works. That's the reason why we probably have got the quality we have. And each and every piece of meat that's in this butcher shop, I know exactly where it's come from. So, roughly, how many hours a day are you in here? Mate, I'm here from 3.30 to 4 in the morning till 5.30, 6 at night sometimes. And, and, and I enjoy every bit of it. We make our, our homemade sausages and we try to make it as many we can, what we can, and try to please each and every region, whether it's Calabrese, Sicilian, um, Napoletano, whatever it is. Oh. Everybody's got their own recipes and I just make it to everybody. Show us how you make it. I'll show you how to make it, but I won't tell you what I put in it. Oh, I'd love to know some <laughs> of your secrets. Let's see, though, let's go. <laughs> so, what goes on those beautiful sausages? Well, Maldi, as you can see, I've got three cuts of meat on this table, which what we try to do is your belly which is a famous pork belly that everybody loves. Beautiful. It you got your pork shoulder, shoulder, the shoulder, with the pork collarbone, which is a pork neck, yep. or the scotch filler, whatever you want to call that. Yep. And then we've got a little bit of leg. By combining it together, you're going to get a little bit of lean, a little bit of flavour, and the most important one, the belly. And this white so stuff is the best the part of it. Goes the whole pig goes into sausages. Yeah. Brilliant. What are you doing now? What we do now, like I just said to you before, we bind a little bit of shoulder, which is a little bit of the shoulder, a little bit of the belly, and a little bit of the leg. So we mean things this by hand or better no, 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 machine? No, 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 a machine next to oh, door, no. in, the, in the old days, we used to cut it by hand. We can do that, mince it through there. So we throw in the machine. A machine, a bit of that one, mix it up and a bit of leg. As you can see, like on the machine now, because I can't yep. turn it on, as you can see, if you want to have a look at it in there, yep. that's got a little bit of the pork, the fat, and all that. I mean, we can do a little bit of that there, then we'll just so we'll flip it. We first mince it, and then we season it. Okay, and then what we'll do is I'll just put the machine now, just run it through the machine. All right. And you can actually see it running. Okay, there. And you can, as you can see, oh, oh, as, you, as you can see in there, you've got a little bit of the fat. Bit of meat. Yeah, yeah, you can put it there. Look at this beautiful meat. Wow. So it's seasoning time now. We're gonna get the, the real secret. What's in the seasoning? Let's see. So how much salt we're we gonna put in here? It's probably about four or five kilos here. So what's the percentage? We normally say some anything from 20 to 25 grams. Okay. Per, 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 kilo. per kilo. Right. Got some homemade uh, chilies. Well, chili, it's up to you how much you like. Of you like uh, if you're calabrese, it's extra hot. Oh, but wow. It's a little bit hot. <laughs> some black pepper. Some, some bit of black pepper, as you've seen on there. I love my fennel. Oh, There's your fennel. That's beautiful. Fennel seeds. Yeah. Okay, be generous with this. And white pepper. White pepper. We're going to mix this meat and then put it to rest so the, the seasoning goes through the complete mix. If you like some colour, we add some paprika. Very well, good. With the paprika, what I like to do, and, and I think is uh, very important, you get a little sieve. All right. Yes. Sieve and you do it. With the paprika, because as you can see, the paprika, it's got those little balls, and it's very hard to, to break up. Wow, that's a little secret I didn't know. So sieve the paprika. And sieve the paprika. So you don't get... And then what I can say, you can actually see Excellent. all the little balls that are left there. Excellent. So mix it again. So mix it again. Beauty. And then they just got to break them up. Yep. I can't wait to taste it. Mm. And if you ever go on this, I mean, I, I do this all the time, man. I gotta really? have a go too, mate. Beautiful. Also to check if the spices are enough. Yeah, not a bad job, Maurizio. Not a bad job, is nah. it? Then let's make the sausage. Let's go, Maurizio. Bring the skins, you bring the meat, huh? Definitely. Show all me. right. That's our little machine over here. Here you go. Takes a little passion. It takes a little passion, eh? that's all it is, eh? Some good traditional Italian sausage. There's a, there's a real recipe for success, Maurizio. What is it? Passion and love, man. 
Right. And you get results out of that. Excellent. That's it, then we just squash it all in like we did before. Try to get a little bit of the air pockets that's in there. Okay. What skins are those? They're the ox runners. Okay. Ox runners, and all we'll we do is we wash them in a little bit of warm water. We don't have to turn them inside out. Some people like to turn them inside out, but we didn't. They're already been washed. Nothing. And they fell on clean. there. And what we'll do is, as you can see, we'll put a little bit of lemon in the water, right. to get a little bit of flavour, yep. and then we'll just put it into the machine. And that's all you do. They Still your, made like that's it. Uh, the old days. The old days, mate. The old days. You don't want them too firm. You don't want them too soft. Right. You don't have too much air in there. Tell them, mate. We'll just leave them up like that now. We'll make it into a little roll like that, eh? Look at that. We'll do four sausage to a string, and then we'll do it again. We'll do four a, sausage, three, one, two, three, four. four. And then we'll Whoa. do a loop again. No, no, don't cut it just yet, okay. Maurice. We'll do the loop first. All right. Loop first. Yes. And then what we'll do now, we'll just cut it. Yes. Oh, great. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Look at this. You can take that and cook that for the boys this afternoon. Face. That's it, huh? I'm the king of the sausage. That's it, huh? The sausage king. So here we are, the great result, tasting time after we make the sausage. How long does it take to dry? Well, Maurizio, these sausages you've seen over here now, they're probably on about just close on two weeks. Mm -hmm. I always like to cut it on an angle, so then you can see a little bit of the fat. You don't get the whole lot of the fat on it. Are you sure? It's, uh, this is hard. Well done, Pasquale. And as you can see, that's got a little bit of the fat and a bit of the um, colour, and it's got a beautiful colour, the way it's dried up. Nice. And it tastes good too, huh? Mm. Amazing. Uh -huh. You can't do it without some beautiful sausage like those. Fresh Italian sausage is uh, definitely one of the most traditional, you know, Italian recipe. But what about those beautiful baby goats? Look at this. Well, you can see some in the cabinet for you. Which looks like a rabbit. It's like a rabbit, right? Oh my Look God, this is a milk fat goat. Probably never had any grass before, eh? Look at that, huh? Wow. And the osso buco. That's another traditional Italian meat. The beef, the lamb, lamb chops. Look at that. Amazing. So, what about we're going to do some uh, cooking with some beautiful beef that comes from your farm? I've got some nice uh, fillet. We'll do a little bit of steak tartare. What do you reckon, eh? Good idea. Let's go have a look, huh? So all this beautiful baby beef I've seen, I think it's time for cooking and I love to, to cook something for you now. Thank you, mate. And all we're gonna do here, and then we've got a little head of the fillet, which is a butt fillet. Okay. Which, uh, we're gonna, I just this is come from your farm? This is all from our farm, yeah, that yeah. there. And then I got a, this is from the farm, we'll just trim it all up for you, Maurizio. Okay. Take all the little sinews out, which I've done yeah. somewhat already. Turn that around a little bit. So this recipe I'm gonna show you today, it's a very classic. It's a steak tartare. We're gonna cook it, but without fire. We got some beautiful lemon juice, and then all some uh, stunning ingredients. I got uh, some mustard, some chopped parsley, some uh, lemon juice again. I have the, the chopped onions, Rochester sauce, and capers. And we're gonna chop those capers, and then mix it with some beautiful free-range eggs from Harvey. The egg yolk is part important of it. Obviously, salt and pepper. And some people love a touch of paprika on it. That's it, Maurizio, you got love? is a uh, mincing time. So to make a steak tartare, once you've got a beautiful meat like this, you don't want to ruin it. So we're going to mince it by hand. It's the softest piece of meat, and it's so juicy that the, I believe the, the mincer will take off a bit of this juice and protein. Cutting small strings. Look at that. Looks like a wagyu beef. Look at the beautiful <laughs> fat, fat in it. Good old fashioned mince, eh? That's what a machine, right. eh? <laughs> a little bit of olive oil in the bottom, so I can turn it around and recreate the steak. Wow, look, extra virgin olive oil from Gingilli. And then we start with the, all the other ingredients. Chopped onions. Actually, this we can leave it last. We put some lemon juice, so we start cooking. That's how we do it. Fresh lemon juice. We don't use any fire. That's how we cook it. And then, Definitely some mustard. You don't want too much acidic, so you can really appreciate the flavor of the meat and the sweetness. Some Winchester sauce. And now we mix it. You will see the color will change from red to gray. You can put some parsley. So once you get to this stage, that you mix it properly, 
we're gonna name this the butcher's fill of steak. Fill of steak because eh? usually the butcher cook, doesn't cook the meat, he just eats it. That's it, eh? That's nice it, and raw, eh? isn't it? So once the eggs is all in, turn the plate upside down, turn it, and a brilliant steak should fell in. That's it. I love my olive oil. On top of it, extra virgin, and why not? Some garnish and some opacity. I think it's time for tasting my steak tartare, which uh, I name it after you, the Pasquale steak tartare. Thanks, man. Buon appetito. Grazie. <laughs> And that's how we eat it. Sitting down in my beautiful restaurant anytime with the best beef from Pasquale Princi from his farm in Gingin. And thank you very much for showing me Maurizio, the, the Maurizio, I'll give you this. And if you want a good meal, Maurizio, and my menu, Princi, mate, Maurizio cooking, can't go wrong. <laughs>